Hello all, in this particular tutorial, we will learn MySQL 8 administration for beginners on Windows Server 2022. The steps mentioned here will work on Windows 10, Windows 11, Windows 2019, 2016 and Windows 2022. So almost similar, I chose Windows Server 2022. You can do this on Windows 10 as well or Windows 11. Now, the software used here is VirtualBox 7.0.6, Windows Server 2022 and MySQL 8.0.32. That's the version that we'll be using to set up this particular lab. What are we going to learn? And as you can see, we are going to learn a lot. We are going to learn how to install MySQL database server, how to start and stop MySQL, how to connect to MySQL, how to create your first database, how to create your first table, how to create a user in MySQL, how to backup the database, how to drop the database, and how to restore the database. These are the steps to set up the database server. So first thing, download the MySQL MSI installer. Once you download that particular installer, use the install, right click and run the install command. Use the install command to install Use the run install MySQL server and MySQL workbench. If you want to install another packages, you can. There are multiple packages based on your need. You might want to install one or more. Once the installation is completed, then we are launch MySQL 8 command line client to, to connect to your MySQL. It will prompt for the root password. Whatever password you gave during the installation, use that particular password to connect to MySQL server. Now that we are connected, it's time to create your first MySQL database. To create the, a database called test, you will use a command called create database test. If you want to create a user, let's say we want to create a user one. Now that test database is created, we'll create a user called user one. So we'll use a command create user user one at localhost identified by give a password or for and this particular password is for this particular user. Now. We will also do one more thing. We will grant all the privileges, all the privileges on this particular database test.star. So the star means everything to this particular user that we created. So this particular user will have all the privileges only on the test databases. And to make sure that the privileges are effective, we'll use the flush privileges command. We created the database, we created the user, we granted the privileges and we flushed the privileges. Now it's time to connect to the database using the user that we created. So connect to MySQL as user one. We will use MySQL U instead of using the root. Now we will use the user, user one minus P press enter. It will prompt for the password or a less secure way is we can specify the password in the same command line. This is a less secure way. Do not use it in your production environment. If user one is connected now, use the test use test means we are going to switch to that particular database so you'll say use test it will switch to that particular database now create a new table called employee so we'll say create employee table employee give the employee id give the employee name as the two columns of int and character so we are going to create a table we are going to add a record and we are going to select and if all goes well in our test database, there will be an employee table with one record in that. Now it's time to take the backup of the database because we got data in our database. It's not no longer empty. So using the MySQL dump, take the backup. So I, I'm saying MySQL dump root user, password of the root user and store the backup in this particular location. And for this particular database called test, take the backup. So using the MySQL dump, we'll take the backup. Once the backup is created, we'll verify that the backup is present. We'll drop the database and we will verify that the database is dropped. And then we will source the backup and we will restore or restore the backup. And we'll verify that the backup is the database is back. And we'll verify that our table employee is also back. Now that we have done all of it, let's learn how to start and stop. So you, we can start and stop MySQL using services.msc or we can use the Windows command prompt net start the service name and next stop service name or we can use the powershell stop service the name of the service start service name of the service 
and get service command will tell us whether the service is running or not. Now that we have seen everything, it's time to actually do the exercise. So the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and click on the internet and go on the internet and search for download MySQL MSI installer. Make sure you download the MSI installer. MSI installer makes our life easy. So you can see we got a result called MSI installer. If you download the smaller 2.4 MB, when you install the component, the download will be quick, but when it installs, it needs to pick up, pull the component from internet. The installation will be slower. If you download the full package, then the installation will be faster. So we'll choose the full package. No, just if you want to sign in, you can sign in. If you don't want to sign in, you just say, no, thanks. Just start my download and it's going to start downloading the installer. I have already done this. So I'm going to cancel this. We don't no longer have any work with Firefox. So we are going to close the Firefox and we are going to go to the server where we are. We have downloaded a particular package. So let's go to that E drive. And this is the package. Right click and say install. And it's going to open the installer for us. Let's wait for click on yes. And wait for it to and again it says this and click on yes and you can see my SQL installer has started. Now based on what options you want to choose developer server client based on the options. I'm going to say custom because custom allows us to choose the component. Click on next what component we want. So we'll say MySQL Server 8. So click on this. There is an arrow button here. Click on that arrow button. So you can see now we have said this is this is uh, this is the product that we are going to install. And then we are also going to say that we want to install the workbench. Then click on yes. The workbench will allow us to connect to the MySQL Server using the GUI. So we are selecting. It's not a mandatory, but it's a good package to have. Click on. So ready to install, ready to install, looks good. Click on execute, which will start installing these two packages. So the installation of server is completed. The workbench is happening right now. So give it a minute for this particular installation to finish. Once the installation is finished, click on next. Ready to configure. We are now ready to configure. Click on next. Which kind of config type? development server or computer so development is for the development minimum resources server is where multiple applications along with mysql dedicated means only the mysql so i'll go with mysql dedicated then if you want to change the port you can change the port if you want to keep it default if you want to change the logging options you can choose the logging options i'll choose default so click on next strong pa password authentication or the legacy i'll choose the strong because it's always better to go with the strong password. Now give some complicated password here. Don't give a simple password. It won't take a simple password. So give a complicated password. I'm literally giving pass one, two, three, four hash pass. And you know, it is not a strong. So it says it's a medium and that's fine. It works. So I'm going to use that particular password. And if you want to add any users, you can use add user to add additional users, but we are going to leave that click on next. And it's configure MySQL survey server as a Windows service. Yes, we want to do that. And what's the service name? So we can change the service name if you want. Run Windows service as a standard system account. Or if you want to give the custom user. So any user which is already there on the machine, you can use that. Or you can say standard system account. That's fine. Click on next. Grant full access to the user running. Yes, that's fine. Click on next. And if now I'm going to say execute. And this all steps will happen. And if everything if whatever we have done till now works fine, then our MySQL server will be installed successfully. So give it a minute for MySQL server to get installed. So that's done. Click on finish configuration complete. Next, you want to start MySQL workbench? No, I'm going to uncheck it and I'm going to click on finish. So that's good. Now what I'm going to do is you can see here a MySQL package came. I'm going to click on MySQL 8 command line client. And I'm going to enter the password, the root password that I gave, pass1234 hash. And you can see we are connected. Show databases command will show us the databases present. And there are four internal databases. These are the databases. These are internal MySQL databases. I'm going to close this. I'm going to close this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch the Windows command prompt. And I'm going to say MySQL. And you can see 
it cannot find a MySQL program. It cannot find a MySQL program. If I run MySQL minus u root minus p, this is the way we are going to say MySQL user root minus p. And you can see even this particular command doesn't work, which means MySQL command is not found. But we just install MySQL, but still it cannot find. So let's fix that particular problem. So what we are going to do is we are going to go to the start menu. We are going to go to the MySQL. We are going to click on this. So let me go back. We are going to launch this. Go to the MySQL. We are going to right click on this. Click on more. Click on open file location. So right click. Click on more. Click on open file location. Then again right click properties. Take a note of this particular path. Take a note of this particular path. Click, take a note. So put it in a notepad. Save it somewhere. Keep a note of this. Cancel. Close this. We don't need. We don't need. No longer needed. Open advanced system settings. Click on environmental variables. Click on path. And click on new and whatever path path that we copied here, take that particular path and say new, say OK, say OK, say OK, launch another command prompt. And this time, if I say the same command which failed MySQL minus U root minus P, this works, it prompts for the password. Let's say we'll enter the password. And we can see we are connected. So we fix that issue of MySQL being not recognized. So all good. So now what we are going to do is we are going to connect to our MySQL database using the command prompt. So let's clear this. Let's clear this and let's clean this. And let's say MySQL minus U root minus P. And if I press enter, it prompts for the password. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to use this particular method and I am going to use the less secure method. And that is, I'm going to say this and this will work, but don't use it in the organization. So now I'm connected. If I want to clear the screen, I'll say system CLS. Let's clear the screen. If I want to see the databases, I'll say show databases. I got four internal databases. Now we are ready to create our first database. We are ready to create our first database. So I'll say create database test. And then that looks good. And if I say show databases, now I got five databases, five rows, and one of the test database that we just created that appears all good. Now that the database is created, let me create a user in the system. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say show database. I'm going to create a new user. So I'll command is create user, the name of the user, which is user one at localhost identified by give up strong password. I'm going to use the same password as a root user. Don't do this in your organization. Keep do not give the same password as a root user. Root user password should be really strong. So that's done. We have created a user now. Let's connect to this particular data server, MySQL server using the user one. So let's clear this particular screen. And we are going to connect to this. So let's put it here slightly. And what we are going to do, we are going to say MySQL minus you, the user that we created, which is user one. And we are going to give the password of that user, which is pass one, two, three, four hash. And you can see that we got connected. And if I say show databases, he cannot see the user one cannot see the test database. That is another two. There are five, but he can only see these two internal databases. He can't see the test database as well. So what we are going to do now is we are going to say grant all privileges on test dot star to user one. And okay, so the I need to mention user one at localhost So you can see that I made a mistake. So uh, the user is actually user one. So I'm going to correct this particular thing. And I'm going to say and that this works. So user one because we created user one at localhost and I just specified user one. So that did not work. So now that now I'm going to say flush privileges. 
and again there is a spelling mistake and that's done and now if i come as this user and if i run show databases he should be able to see the test database all good so the user one database has got the access to the test database now what we are going to do is we are going to we are going to create a table called employee so before creating the table let's see let's connect to that particular database and the command would be use test test database and database change Show tables will tell us if there are any tables empty set create a new table called employee so let's create a table called employee with column first column as employee id of type int and the second column of employee name as character 10 and let's do this and now if i say select star from employee if i say select star from employee empty set so which means we do not have any record in the employee table i'm going to insert a record insert into employee the first employee so values one comma the first employee who joined our organization let's say we'll name him literally as first m that's done and if i now run select star from employee we got one employee called first one first employee now that employee table employee is there some data is there it's time to drop the database but before dropping the database i'm going to i'm going to take the backup and to take the backup the command is mysql dump so we are going to use the mysql dump using root using the password of the root this is where it's going to store the backup and for this database test database we are going to take the backup now let's go there and before doing that let's create a directory so i'm going to create a directory called edrive backup so let's make directory edrive backup let's create a directory go to that particular directory verify if there is anything in that particular directory here and you can see zero bytes literally nothing now what we are going to do is we are going to use the mysql dump command mysql dump user root password one two three four hash result file this is where we are going to store the backup database test that looks good deal now we can see that we got a backup test.sql now we'll go here and we will say drop database test will drop the database that worked fine show databases the test database is gone we no longer have the test database let's verify using the root user so let's connect using the root user and make sure that even the root user cannot see that and he can see root user also cannot see the test because the test database is dropped now it's time to restore the database so we will say source e drive backup the location of the backup name of the backup file which is backup underscore test dot sql and that worked fine now if i run if i run show databases the test database has come back again let's verify whether the user one can see it so show databases and you can see the test is back again now let me clear the screen use test select star from employee and there should be one record in our employee table so we can see we got the one record in our employee table so we learned how to how to drop the database select how to restore the database how to back up the database now we are going to learn a final thing let's now we are able to connect to our instance because actually we are able to connect to our instance because sql server is running how to stop the sql server if you want to stop the sql server there are multiple options one is go to the services look for mysql 80 service because we gave the name as mysql 80 you can see it's running stop the service stop the service once we stop the service now if i try to if i exit it and if i try to connect i won't be able to connect because the service is stopped the ser you can see can't connect we got a message can't connect so let me start it back again and once i start it then you can see that i'm able to connect now there are other methods so what i'm going to do is i'll show you the other methods as well so let's launch powershell 
as an admin so let's launch powershell as admin and what we will say let's look at the service get service minus name mysql at look for this particular service and you can see that particular service is running let's say stop service minus name mysql at we are going to stop that particular service and if that particular and then once that it says it is waiting let's see the get the mysql at is stopped now let's try to connect and we should not be able to connect again so let me clear the screen and it we should not be able to because we have stopped and if we want to start the service we will say start service and that should bring it up again and we should be able to connect so this is another way and then there is a windows command prompt command so we can use the windows command prompt so let's say run as admin and what we are going to do is like let's verify first whether the service is running and you can see the service is running let's use the windows command prompt and the command would be net stop mysql at and mysql at service is stopping now if i say get service it says stop and if i want to start it we'll say net start mysql at and now if i say get service and you can see it's running so there are multiple ways of stopping and starting the services one is powershell one is windows command or one is services.msc i hope this particular tutorial was useful in this particular tutorial we learned how to set up mysql 8 on the windows server the steps mentioned here will work on windows 10 windows 11 windows 2016 2019 and 2022 it will work exactly the same i hope this particular tutorial was useful i hope you are learning something new on my channel if you are do subscribe to my channel if my channel is helping you to grow in your career or it's helping you on your job then do hit the like button and make sure to subscribe my channel thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial bye bye